Quiet day of the beer, birds were chirping, tourists were enjoying the sea, even the cows were enjoying themselves. Edward had just finished shunting his trucks into a siding when Percy arrived. What a lovely day, said Percy. Indeed, I can't remember the last day it was this sunny, replied Edward. Edward and Percy had been helping deliver coal to the harbor for sailors to ship to the mainland. They were quite enjoying themselves, when all of a sudden a loud screech from a distance. Here's James, he said, puffing the station. Are you ready to see a thing or two, Percy? Edward let off a bit of steam. Percy, you'd best to not listen to him. He could get you in quite a lot of trouble. Edward puffed away. James smirked at Percy. Ever hear of Dutch dropping? What's that? It's something the engines do on the mainland, not something most engines can do. James began to shunt his train around. As he shunted, he began to Dutch drop the cars. First, he was amazed at what he was seeing. I'd better get out of his way, Percy said. Slowly but surely, James was giving it his all. Finally, once the new slow goods was arranged, he coupled up and waited for the signal. I'll be back tomorrow, Percy. Want me to teach you my new trick? Huff, James. Uh, 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 of course, Percy stammered. Uh, I'd love that. That night, Percy and Edward stayed at the seaside shed. He wanted to tell Edward to all about what he had saw, but he didn't want to get Edward in trouble. The next day, Percy's driver and fireman came up. They got his fire stoked and began to work. Percy was slow at first getting used to it, but he eventually got it. Soon enough he went to collect his first load of coal. When he returned, Edward was just getting ready. Percy went to get the cars that was in Edward's way. He tried to Dutch drop them into the siding. Then there was trouble. Cars were stacked up and derailed. Percy! Boomed a familiar voice. I'd expect this from James, but never from you. Soon the breakdown train had arrived. Percy was given a stern talking to from the back control. And James a more severe once over. James and Edward were in the sheds that night. James, of course, sulking. He knew he'd done wrong, but he didn't think he'd wind up a shunter. Oh, how could I be so stupid? All I wanted was to make the work faster, and now I'm stuck here. Edward didn't say anything. He knew if he did, he would only make James more upset. The next morning, Edward shunted cars around the yard. James tried not to let it bother him, but he could only wonder how long he'd be cooped up. Presently, Henry huffed into the yard with a goods train. He slung into a siding and took them home. Edward shunted the trucks and prepared the next train. James began to fume. What's wrong, James? Have a lesson? What a poor engine. I hope you learn from your mistake. It isn't wrong, we just don't do it. Henry chuckled as he backed onto his track, and with a great leash of steam, he puffed off. Great green galloping seagull, James hissed at Henry. Later that day, Edward came to Cola. He was tired, so his driver and fireman agreed they would let him have a break. So they climbed aboard James and got him up to steam. They slinked into the yard and slowly started shunting, back and forth. They went as James got redder and redder. Five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, he counted as he shunted. Old lazy wheels over there taking a nap. I'll soon show him. He biffed and bashed the trucks, and when he went to take off, the trucks locked their brakes. Hold back, hold back, hold back, they said. That rusty old scrap iron won't take us. We want to 
a sophisticated engine. Not a giant big monster. Lurch force into a passing gate. Derange the signal. James, I've had enough of your actions. You were supposed to be in that shit. Not out here caution this mess. The fat controller was fuming. Once everything was fixed, the fat controller spoke severely to James. And if it happens again, you'll be sent away to learn to do things the proper way. And that's 